Hi guys and gals, this is Arvin coming to you with a video. In order to assist you in quickly deciding if this video is for you or not, you'll notice some text and numbers in the upper left of the video. The text is pretty descriptive. Essentially, it reads the topic type covered in a video, the level the video is aimed at, and the number of the course in that topic at that level. For example, programming beginner 001 means programming beginner level course 001 in this series. Software advanced 010 means software advanced level course 10 in this series. The aim is to make things easier for you if you come across the video in a search or you want to go through things in order. Hopefully this little system will help you guys out. If you don't want to use it, just ignore it. Okay, enough dry academic stuff. Let's get on to the fun stuff. Thank you for watching my video. On with the show. The title of this video is Setting up your free basic development environment. It is video 2 in the beginner level programming series. In the last video, I gave you guys the URLs for the free basic compiler and the free basic IDE. The links are with this video as well, but I'm flashing it on your screen anyway for your convenience. Okay, so we're at the free basic download page now. This is the easy part. Click on the big green button and you're done. Sorry, I couldn't resist. After you click the green button, you're taken to SourceForge. Most likely you've downloaded something from here at some time. It is a free repository for free software projects and you can pretty much download most things from here with confidence. We need to get the binaries for operating system. As you can see from the video, there are binaries for Linux, Windows and DOS, but none for Mac. Mac users should be able to run the Windows binary in Wine. However, that's outside the scope of this video. Also, Apple has certain, shall we say, draconian tendencies when it comes to developers, which has caused Wine on Mac OS a bit of grief recently. Hopefully, our Mac friends will be able to follow along as the steps are logically identical. Note, we are downloading the Win64 zip. There is a Win32 zip and a Win32 executable installer as well. If you're going with 32-bit, you want the zip as well because the zip allows us to follow the config tweaks in this video in an easier fashion. Since I'm using Windows, I've chosen the 64-bit binary download. You'll probably want 64-bit if you're using any Windows version after Vista. Just a word on terminology, I'm using directory which means the same thing as folder. The terms are 100% interchangeable. Select the option to save the file and save it to a main directory you have created just for your free basic development environment. It is strongly recommended that you create a single main directory into which you will place the three different zip files you will be downloading in this video. Then you extract each zip into that directory. The video will make this clear. I use demo YouTube as my main directory. You can name yours anything you like. Just make sure you can find it again. If you want to write 32-bit apps, both 64-bit and 32-bit FreeBasic compilers can exist on the same machine in perfect bliss. You'll just need to repeat these steps for the 32-bit compiler with a different main directory. It is recommended you use a different copy of FBIDE, FreeBasic IDE, with a different bit version of FreeBasic to keep yourself from making errors as your programs get more complex and you start calling external DLLs, etc. At this stage, we see on screen that the FreeBasic 64-bit compiler zip has been downloaded and extracted. We saw the FBC EXE inside the compiler folder. This is the compiler executable. However, we still need to download the FreeBasic IDE since the FreeBasic compiler is command line only and when we run it, we get nothing except a black screen that flashes by. Make sure and save the file to the main directory you created for your FreeBasic development environment. This is very important so that you can keep track of everything and follow along easily with the video. Okay, all good so far. We've downloaded the FreeBasic compiler zip and we've extracted it to the main directory we created. We've downloaded the FreeBasic IDE and we've extracted that to the directory that we created. Remember, once you download and extract the zips, 
you are navigating into and out of the extracted directory, not the zip files. This is very important and it's an easy mistake to make in Windows as you can navigate into a zip and it will look just like a directory. Notice the zip icons versus the folder icons. We've navigated into the FBIDE folder and run the FBIDE EXE only to get an error. That sucks. Well, actually, this is a good kind of error because FBIDE knows it hasn't been configured to use any compiler as yet. We then select Yes. A file browser opens up and we navigate to the FreeBasic compiler folder and select the FBC EXE. This step is vital to being able to use the FreeBasic compiler. Pay close attention and make sure you are selecting the FBC EXE that is in the extracted folder, not the one inside the zip. We can double click on the FBC.exe or click open after selecting it. If everything's been done correctly, you'll see the FreeBasic IDE screen, which looks a lot like a simple note bad type with processor. Let's open one of the example programs, of which there are a ton of them in the examples folder, inside the FreeBasic compiler folder. You can pause or slow down the video and look at the folder directory structure to be clear on where the examples are located and which example I'm loading in the video. I'm going through the folder structures just to give you an idea of where you are. I'll open the depth.bass example, which is in the graphics folder, to show the simple process of compiling and running a free basic file. When you open the .bass file, it opens in the ID just like a text document within a word processor. You then select compile and run from the run menu. That's about it. If all went well as it should, you'll see two windows a blank console window, and a window displaying some colors. FreeBasic generates a console for every application by default. This is useful for displaying debug information, etc. Don't worry, this console can be hidden by your code or OS options. Okay, no programming environment setup would be complete without a Hello World test. So let's write code to display Hello World to the user and have them see it and hit a key to close the app. This is about the simplest kind of program that you can write in any programming language. So it is used as the benchmark test that you have a working program environment. Hello World is legendary among true programmers. We simply close the existing program in the IDE. Then we create a new program, just like creating a new document in a word processor. I want to print hello world, so let's see if I type print hello world if that will work. Programmers can be very optimistic people sometimes. <laughs> when we go to the run menu, we see compile and compile and run. In the previous lesson, we learned what compiling is. In most cases, you'll want to take the lazy route and select compile and run. Otherwise, the compiler will compile the program to machine code and not run it. Now we get this message, file is modified and before continuing, it needs to be saved. Remember, compilers take the source code and convert it to machine code. We need to give it a file, so we have to select yes and save our source code file somewhere. To avoid much pain, head banging on desks and strong urges to scream violently at the top of your lungs, always create a logical directory structure for your code. Let's create a directory called my code in the main folder we have our compiler and IDE in. We'll save our source code, or program if you will, as a file called hello world.bass. So now we go back to the run menu and select compile and run. And a black screen flashes by. Oh yes, remember that console business we were talking about before? Well, a simple program like this is by default a console-only application. So it runs and closes the console after it is done, in an instant. How do we make it so we can see what is going on? You've guessed it. 
the URL that flashes on the screen is where we go to download the latest manual. We just navigate down into the documentation folder and select the CHM manual. This is important as this is the format the built-in documentation reader expects. When you select the file, make sure and download it to the same root directory you put the compiler and IDE into. Also, you'll be unzipping it there. Okay, now we're going to run the FreeBasic IDE again to configure it to use the new help file. Remember, we configured it to use the compiler version we downloaded when we selected the fbc.exe file. To do this configuration, we have to do a little more work. We have to go to Settings in the View menu, which is located between the Search and Run menu items. Select the FreeBasic tab inside the dialog that pops up, and select the button next to the Help file .chm text box as in the video. This pops up a file browser window and you navigate to where you have the chm file. You just download it. You then double click the file or select open. Then click OK and you're done. Now you can get help by clicking help from the help menu. There's tons of stuff there, including full tutorials, etc. We'll do a search for input and see if anything comes up. Well, what do you know? There is a ton of documentation on almost every built-in function, including self-contained, simple examples. Now this is my kind of language and environment. Having seen the documentation, I am now confident I can get this Hello World program to pause for input. Remember, programmers are an overly optimistic bunch. <laughs> we're going to declare a variable of type string. Then we're going to use a built-in function that captures user input from the keyboard. It's just one of many. We're assigning this input to our string variable, but in this short program, we never use it. In a real program, we would use this input to branch into all sorts of processing. So we did it. It works. This concludes the second part in our two-part series on setting up the FreeBasic environment. I may do some more videos that deal with the specifics on programming the FreeBasic language in this environment if there's enough interest in the comments. However, this should give anyone a solid base from which to launch into programming this powerful yet simple programming language. I hope you enjoyed it.